Thanks for joining us today. Welcome to the Center for States video series on the essential functions for monitoring, evaluating, and applying findings. This series is produced by the Capacity Building Center for States and funded by the Children's Bureau. The Monitoring, Evaluating, and Applying Findings Brief is intended to help child welfare agency leaders, managers, and stakeholders take a structured approach to plan for and execute strategies to monitor and evaluate implementation efforts and interventions, strategies to collect and analyze data for a variety of evaluation types, and then using data to make decisions and plan for sustainability of programs where feasible. It does this by providing step-by-step -step guidance to strategize and develop a plan for evaluation, collect and analyze data and consider fidelity and costs, and then use the results to make decisions about ongoing efforts and sustainability. The monitoring, evaluating, and applying findings brief is broken down into four parts and 11 essential functions or tasks. It is important to remember that while the steps are presented in a linear way, in practice, often these steps will overlap and be revisited as teams continue to monitor, evaluate, and apply their findings over time. Part one is setting the stage and includes considering the circumstances and needs of the agency, developing a logic model, which is the topic of this module, identifying questions of interest, identifying the data measures, sources, and collection methods that will answer them, and then developing an evaluation plan. Part two is collect and analyze data, and it includes strategies to put the evaluation plan into place by collecting and analyzing the data outlined, and then two special featured topics that are a version of data collection and analysis. They are examining fidelity and analyzing costs. Part three outlines how to use the data collected to make decisions and adjustments with two functions on sharing findings and recommendations and then making decisions to further spread, adjust, or discontinue. And part four is on sustainability planning and how teams should refine and implement a plan to sustain interventions when this is the decision of the team and stakeholder groups. Let's get started. Why do teams need to develop a logic model? Developing a logic model together helps teams get consensus on the inputs, activities and outputs needed for the evaluation plan and what outcomes they will achieve. And a logic model helps teams have a visual representation of an intervention that shows inputs, activities, outputs and outcomes in a structured format to guide their work during evaluation. How do teams develop a logic model? Teams can create a logic model by talking through the key components together inputs, activities, outputs, short-term outcomes, and long-term outcomes. Some teams may find it easier to enter information beginning with inputs and moving toward outcomes, while others may prefer starting with the outcomes in mind and working backward to think through what would be needed to achieve them. Inputs are what the team needs as far as materials or resources to deliver the intervention. Identifying the inputs allows the team to assess whether there are adequate resources and structures to carry out the activities. Inputs might include funding, staff, or certain materials like training curricula. Activities represent the things the team plans to do with the inputs to address the problem or implement the intervention. Activities might include things like training or family assessments. Outputs are the direct results of the planned activities. Typically, these things are, can be counted. For example, number of trainings held, staff trained, family meetings conducted, or assessments completed. And they may also represent products created. For example, guidelines or policies developed. Outputs could include the number of staff trained or the number of families receiving assessments. Short-term and intermediate outcomes are the expected short-term and intermediate results of the planned activities and outputs. Short-term and intermediate outcomes might include improvements in staff knowledge and skills. Then long-term outcomes are the desired conditions for the system, agency, or target population as a result of their activities. In child welfare, long-term outcomes are often expressed in terms of the safety, 
permanency, and well-being of children, youth, and families. It's important to note that changes in long-term outcomes may take several years to occur. Long-term outcomes could include a recurrence of maltreatment that decreases by a certain amount or percentage. Teams should brainstorm together around the following questions to develop their logic model. What are the key activities of the intervention? What inputs, materials, or resources are needed to conduct the activities and deliver services? Does the team have what they need or are there any gaps that need to be addressed? What outputs will the activities produce? What are the counted outputs and product outputs? For example, the number of staff trained or new guidelines or policies. What short-term and intermediate outcomes will result from the activities? What is the desired long-term change? Are the inputs, activities, outputs, and outcomes logically connected? And what assumptions underlie the logic model and the related theory of change? For example, is there an assumption that there will be a certain number of service recipients in order to see the change? Or is there an assumption that all staff will complete the training? Let's take a look at an example logic model from Appendix B in the Monitoring, Evaluating, and Applying Findings Brief. The team in this example considered the potential input, activities, and outputs at both the practice and the system level, as they would both have an impact on the team's capability to monitor, evaluate, and apply findings to the intervention. The list of input the team brainstormed included collaborative partnerships with other state systems, local organizations, and providers or universities, home visiting grant funding and technical assistance, home visitation models and related program materials, state program managers, skilled home visitation staff and supervisors, and the agency's data information system. The team then listed their system level activities, including forming collaborative agreements and providing cross system training. At the practice level, they identified implementing outreach strategies to high risk populations, conducting home visits to new parents, engaging parents, facilitating parent child activities, conducting parent and child screenings, and providing referrals to community services and coordinating intake and follow ups. Outputs at the system level included the number of partnership agreements signed and the number of collaborative meetings, as well as the number of trainings and participants. At the practice level, they identified the number of families enrolled in programs, the number, frequency, and duration of home visits, the number of screenings conducted, and number of types of referrals, and then the number, type, and dosage of services received by families. Let's move on to look at the rest of their logic model. The teams then listed the expected short-term outcomes. At the system level, this included the increased communication between partner organizations. And at the practice level, it was increased staff and parental awareness of community services, improved parental understanding of child development and needs, increased parental knowledge of nurturing parenting behaviors, and positive discipline techniques, and increased parental connections with needed services, including health and mental health services and support groups. The team identified intermediate outcomes as improved coordination between partner organizations, and at the practice level, they included improved family functioning, increased parental resilience, increased positive parent-child interactions, improved child health and development, and decreased child abuse and neglect. Lastly, the team identified their long-term outcomes, which included thriving families that reflect child safety and child and family well-being. Once team members have created a logic model they believe fairly represents their intervention, they should share it with stakeholders outside the core implementation team. If connections don't seem logical or reasonable, teams may need to clarify and make revisions to their logic model. Keep in mind that teams often need several drafts before landing on a final version. Let's take a moment to check in on what you've learned about developing a logic model. Why do teams develop a logic model?
Teams create a logic model to have a visual representation of an intervention that shows inputs, activities, outputs, and outcomes in a structured format. How do teams develop a logic model? Teams can create a logic model by identifying together the inputs, activities, outputs, short-term and intermediate outcomes, as well as long-term outcomes. What can help teams develop a logic model? Brainstorming together the key items for each component, identifying the underlying assumptions that make the logic model work, and engaging key stakeholders in review. Now take this a step further by reviewing the reflection questions for develop a logic model in your monitoring, evaluating, and applying findings workbook to connect what you've learned to your own experience. Up next is identify questions, the fourth module in this series and the third essential function in setting the stage for monitoring and evaluation. This video was created by the Capacity Building Center for States, funded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Administration for Children and Families, Children's Bureau, under contract HHS P233201400033 c The content of this video does not necessarily reflect the official views of the Children's Bureau.